Hey guys, Monday Morning Racer here, Lee Craft behind me, the museum inside Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But you're going to see footage from the U.S. Nationals. I was there on Monday for eliminations. You're going to see almost every final, including almost every round of factory stock and interviews from pro drivers. That's next on Monday Morning Racer. Monday morning racer here in the pits with Ron Caps. Man, Ron, look, ever since a chassis change in Atlanta, y'all been running very consistently, but what happened out there in round one? Uh, we just, you know, um, can't take anybody lightly. And uh, especially Dale Worsham took Worsham's car. It's a good car. It only shows up once in a while, but that's a championship running car. So we just had to go up there and try to run like we did in qualifying. And unfortunately, the car got moved around a little bit and smoked the tires, and he came around me. He got the win. You're out. Hey, still a fan favorite out here. Thank you for signing autographs like you're doing. Look, I got a question for you. You know motorsports pretty well because you drove a lot of different things, been around, you know the history of this sport. What do you count as the crown jewel events of NHRA drag racing? Certainly this one, but what are the other ones? Well, you know, they used to have, uh, I don't know what they called the big four, but back in the day, I mean, you had the Nationals, so obviously the U.S. Nationals in Indy. The Gator Nationals is a very historic race. Uh, the Winter Nationals, of course, kind of started everything off and it still starts our season off. And they're upwards of 50, 60 years plus, all those races. We used to have the Spring Nationals at Columbus, which was a big one. We don't race there anymore. Uh, and of course, English Town, a summer national. So all the big nationals were a big deal. Now, you know, for sure, Indy's the biggest, um, but you got you got to look at races like Gainesville and the Gator Nationals and Pomona and the Winter Nationals and the World Finals. Those are probably the, the three big ones. Awesome. All right, so we roll into the countdown next. Your chances, man, for another championship. What do you think? Well, we obviously at Indy, you saw how the car ran, how consistent we were. 389s, we ran three in a row in different conditions. So I always feel great about what Ron Tolbert and our team does. Um, you know, we won this, the 2016 World Championship without winning a race in the countdown, but we're consistent and, and went rounds and went to final rounds and put the pressure on our opponents. So we're going to try and just keep doing that. And I, I always feel good about winning a championship. Until you tell me that we're out of it in Pomona, we're, we're going to fight for it. Awesome. All right, so last question I got for you here, Ron. Last time I asked you about your favorite fast food, and you said Scrubbies and Lloyd's all the way back when they were open. Look, for a guy that goes over 300 miles per hour, what type of ice cream does he like? What's your favorite flavor? Well, when we do have ice cream, which isn't a whole lot, um, we usually go to Cold Stone, and my daughter, she knows to go pick it up for me, and it's it's coffee lovers um, with black cherries mixed in. And, because uh, I love coffee, and I love that coffee taste, and it's got some walnuts, some other things in it, so they should name that after me. Coffee lovers with black cherries mixed in. So maybe you go down there and tell them you want the Ron Caps at Cold Stone and see what they say. Awesome. Ron Caps likes that coffee and cherry flavor for his ice cream. Ron, thank you, sir. Appreciate it. You got it. Did they work? We are about to find out. Bo Butner.
towards the right side. Oh my goodness. And Robert Falcone in thunder. Crossed the center line. Was regaining control and came back to the right side with hard contact on the right side wall. Alan Johnson had red light. And while the wind light is out of the right lane, hitting the wall and crossing the center line is a worse infraction. But right now, what is most important is the safety safari is rolling, and they are going to get to Robert Falcone. And we will let you know when we know. Door coming open on Falcone's Camaro, and we've seen these showdown cars take a couple of big hits. They expanded the field here this weekend, 29 cars. Decided to take the track. Indy Jim, coming back up for his turn road. Donner out there as well, we got a Copo against the Copo. Really good car qualifying, rolling in here as the number three qualifier. one is the one you get today. Look, what were you thinking with the scooter? What in the world? You know, I'm always just unpredictable. That's, that's the best thing to say. People ask me all the time, especially our teammates, they ask like, dude, what is wrong with you? And uh, I don't know, I just try to be different, you know, and uh, hopped on that bird scooter, thought I'd just ride it, you know, the 17 miles out here to the racetrack. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check that out on, on my social media because that's quite a good story. Uh, but uh, no, like I said, trying to be different and uh, ran into some people from Bird. They loved it, so you never know. Like things like that sometimes turn out for the better. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, if you're not following Alex on social media, he's one of the more active drivers. You definitely need to follow him. Now, look, talk to me. I know I'm not in the Pro Mod pits, but you got a beautiful Hot Wheels Pro Mod. How did that deal work out? Well, this weekend. We struggled really bad. You know, they took three pounds of boost away from all the turbo cars, and we all struggled all weekend. 
nobody made stellar runs. Uh, it's a whole new learning curve. You know, it's kind of crazy to, to change the rules right in the middle of the season, especially when people are trying to race for a championship. Uh, we had two rounds of qualifying taken away from us, one due to rain, one due to a crash, and uh, we didn't make the show. So, super unfortunate. We're super new to Pro Mod. Um, what we've done is good is qualifying, you know, number two in that class. As long as you make the show, you can still win the race. And, uh, you know, we've got three more races this year in that class, and, you know, hoping to at least go a few rounds in it. Awesome. All right, my last question for you, Alex. I've been asking all the guys when I interview them. Also, a little bit back to the food question when I talk to you about Waffle House. Look, for a guy that's in a door slammer going over 200, 250 miles per hour, what flavor of ice cream is your favorite? Is it wild or mild? Man, you know what? That's a good question. I don't really like the, the wild stuff. Uh, I'm going to say uh, chocolate and vanilla okay. sometimes mix it together. Awesome. He's a man after my own heart. I'm a bit plain vanilla. Alex, thanks for your time. Hope you do well. All right. Thank you, man. Having a solo run, Frank said, okay, do this or do that. No one did. He's in the final. Monday morning racer, I'm in the pits, but specifically the Cruz Petragon pit, the two-time 
Funny Car World Champion. Cruz, uh, tough, tough weekend here this weekend. Not going to make the countdown, but you still got several more races. What do you think your chances are? At least pick up a Wally before the end of the year. We have work to do. Snap on to old Nitro Funny Car is definitely going to be back uh, in the winter circle here soon. We just we've identified some some uh, internal parts that uh, don't suit our combination very well, namely pistons. Um, they just don't fit what we're doing, so we're gonna we're gonna go to a design that is a proven design out here in the industry. So uh, you know it's a tough weekend, but I've been doing this long enough to know that you just gotta keep chipping away at it and uh, you can't give up. We've got a good team behind us, Snap on behind us, Mopar Dodge. You know, we just gotta we'll, we'll live to fight another day. We we'll just dust ourselves off, get back up and even though we won't race for a championship this year, we didn't really we didn't really have the car, so we're gonna work towards that goal and I don't wanna have to worry about getting in on, on, on a tenth spot at the eleventh hour. We wanna be top five, top four, top two, going into the countdown. Forget this ninth or eighth stuff. That's for losers. We wanna we wanna get out there and uh, and, and really come in with some momentum and win a championship. That's why I still do it. Certainly, you've done it. I know you can do it. It's just going to take some time to get there. I know you're plugging away at it. So look, I know you're an iRacing guy. So when you hop on the sim rig in iRacing, what type of cars do you like to drive the most? Oh man, I love iRacing. It's such a great technology and I'm so grateful that somebody had the wherewithal to, uh, to, to actually put that together and, and, and make it a reality for guys like me that are closet sprint car racers and dirt late model racers. I prefer the dirt. I'm a dirt track guy. So I'll get on the World of Outlaw car, the 410 Sprint car, and, uh, and some dirt late model stuff. I've run dirt late models at Eldora. The Prelude did the dream for many years. So yeah, that's a great, uh, I'm a great fan and, and uh, I get to race. I don't get to do it enough, but, but the fact that they just came out with the Chili Bowl for the midgets here recently really suits my uh, my taste a little bit because like I said, I'm a midget sprint car, just love the dirt. So. Uh, need some more practice, that's all. Awesome. Yeah, I talked to Ron Katz before and asked him about what else he might like to drive. He's been in several different vehicles. You've done the dirt as well at the Prelude of the Dream. Anything else that you'd like to hop in with four wheels and try? Man, I, no, I just, my ultimate car to me, okay, a Nitro Funny Car is a pretty, pretty, uh, it's up there near the top or at the top for, uh, my taste, but but that the wing 410 sprint car does it for me. That's the car that uh, that to me has the power to weight ratio second to none. A lot like a nitro funny car. You can run up against the wall. The bigger the bigger the track, the better for me. Gotcha. All right, my last question for you, Cruz. Look, NASCAR last night ran the Southern 500. They had their throwback weekend. If the NHRA ever did a throwback weekend, what funny car body scheme would you like to run as a throwback paint scheme? Well, I've had some great cars. Snap-on's put me in some great cars the last nine years, but Advanced Auto Parts was a great car. We won a championship with that car in 2008. But boy, that McDonald's car was really something to, uh, just watching the race. That McDonald's car was really something near and dear to my heart. I still eat there, I love the food, and I love that I'm synonymous to younger kids that are now grown men with that particular car at that time, and the, it ran from 92 to 97, so that would be the car. It would be a, uh, a, Pontiac, a Firebird, uh, still up my Dodges, but it would be a Pontiac Firebird yeah. and with that McDonald's scheme, that'd be it, yeah. man. Nothing more iconic than Cruz Petragon in the early 90s with that McDonald's car whipping up on John Ford. <laughs> Cruz, thank you for your time, man. Hey, man. I appreciate you. Always good, man. Thank you for the time. Thank you. Be green, boys, and race it down to the strike. Drew's in. Jerry Ray.
Erica qualified third, Alex qualified fifth. They've never raced each other before in a final round. This is the biggest... Chris 
Marco seems to have got that thing dialed in. Track's getting cool. Sun's down. Track's tight. Here we go. Engine fire. Just in case. Heads up, flat out, no breakout. A trophy 
If you go green and get to the scoreboard before the other guy, it's as simple as that. They're ready. Billingsley. 